So now we're going to do a simple experiment. Here's a simple experiment. We have a bag of cornstarch, and I'm going to mix this with water. And this is something you can get in your kitchen. So I'm going to pour in some cornstarch in the beaker, a lot of cornstarch. Then I'm going to add a little bit of water into the same beaker. Now the next thing you should do is we're going to mix this to make a mixture. So the cool thing about the mixture of cornstarch and water is if you gently play with, if you stir the cornstarch gently, it actually flows it's like liquid. But the thing is if you start to do some severe motion or you, know, you try to stir it really fast, it actually becomes like solid and it breaks. So you can really you know, take out a chunk of cornstarch. We poured some mixture of cornstarch and water into the, a petri dish. And as you can see, if you stir the mixture slowly, gently, it flows like a liquid. It drips. But now if you try to scrape it more vigorously, the cornstarch actually breaks like solid. It cracks. is I'm going to uh, just take out some cornstarch and put it on the speaker. And as you can see, the cornstarch actually, this is like liquid because it flows. And I think this is good enough. All right. And we're going to switch on the amplifier. And as you can see, um, we're vibrating the cornstarch, but at this moment, the cornstarch is not really doing anything because it's still like a liquid. So how do we shear thicken the suspension or the cornstarch is working to vibrate at a higher frequency? And with e even larger displacement, And as you can see, the suspension is actually already shear thickened. So to prove that, I'm going to scrape it. And now you've got this cornstarch monster. Oh, it's pretty messy. And as Neil was showing you, uh, cornstarch has these very bizarre properties uh, that involve uh, the material becoming more viscous as it's stirred more vigorously. And uh, actually, the reason behind this thickening behavior has been a mystery for a very long time. And there have been two competing camps. Uh, one camp claims that uh, these particles, which are just floating around in the liquid, as they're being pushed together, they're basically squeezing a film of liquid from out in between them. And that as it becomes harder and harder to squeeze this film, the particles lock into structures called hydroclusters that sort of move together and make it more difficult for the cornstarch to flow. But an alternative hypothesis has been suggested recently, which states that uh, these particles aren't just squeezing film, liquid from in between them, they're actually coming into contact. And it's the frictional uh, properties of the particles that are determining this uh, clustering behavior and how hard it is for these clusters to flow through the suspension. So the question is, how do we decide between these two hypotheses? And to give you a better idea of, of our strategy, I want to walk you through uh, some of the basic differences between the symmetries associated with each of these mechanisms, the hydrodynamic versus the contact. What I have here are two concentric cylinders. There's an inner cylinder that I can rotate with this uh, lever and an outer cylinder that stays fixed. And in between the cylinders, there's very viscous uh, caro corn syrup. And here I have some more of that corn syrup. And um, the difference between the stuff that I have here is that it's dyed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take up some of the corn syrup into the syringe. Uh, 
and it's viscous, so it's going to take me a little bit of time to get it up there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject the dyed syrup from uh, in between the two cylinders. So here I go. I uh, can't get too much further in. And there is the dyed spot. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the cylinder and mix the dye in. So the cylinder is being rotated once, being rotated twice, being rotated three times, and you can see, and four times, you can see that the dye has been mixed in. But what time reversibility tells us is that if I now reverse the flows, then everything returns to exactly the same spot. So if I go backwards, once, twice, three times, and four times, the dye returns to exactly the same place. In contrast to this symmetric contribution from the hydrodynamics, um, if two of the particles that we have in our suspension actually touch each other, they form a frictional contact, and that force is asymmetric. What that means is that if I'm pushing the particles together, they feel a force, but the minute I release that pushing and separate the particles, they feel no force at all. So in contrast to the hydrodynamic contribution, where the force to push particles together and pull them apart is symmetric, for the contact contribution where they're touching, that force is asymmetric. Um, so the idea of the experiment is pretty simple. We use a rheometer. Basically, it's a cone with a plate, and we sandwich the suspension or the sample shear thickening fluid in between this geometry. And the idea of the experiment is I'm going to uh, put the cone in the suspension, the shear thickening fluid, and work to turn this clockwise until it reaches a steady state then immediately I'm going to reverse the direction of the stirring. And then you immediately record the instantaneous response of the sample. And so the hypothesis, if the response is hydrodynamic, which means most of the contribution comes from the background liquid, you're su supposed to get exactly the same viscosity or the response of the sample. But if it's because of the contact force, since the stress has been released, you're supposed to see a sudden drop of the force that indicates, you know, it is because, really because of the frictional force between particles that gives you the shear thickening. And what we really found was really striking. We find immediately after we reversed the stirring direction, we saw a sudden drop of the force. That's actually a smoking gun evidence showing you that the frictional force is the dominant role in shear thickening mechanism.